Argument Alice, Framework Freddy, Comparison Connie, Structure Sam, Delivery Danny, Rebuttal Rosie, R, the Diology Debate Super Team. They are here to help develop your superpowers. Hello everyone, Framework Freddy here, and today we will discuss the problem and solution framework commonly used in debate. Typically, debate topics aim to solve some issue plaguing society. So whether it's the overconsumption of water, sugary drinks, or coal, it's the debater's responsibility to identify both the problem and solution. But before we discuss how to establish a problem and solution framework, let's briefly elaborate on why it's so valuable for the decision-making process. Each day, the problem and solution framework provides scientists, research teams, and ordinary citizens a practical roadmap while making decisions. That's because everyone experiences some problem. Therefore, having a strategy in place to effectively identify and solve problems is critical. You should know that problem solving is vital to both the individual and organizations. It provides humans the structure necessary to list problems, determine their cause, and create a plan to fix them. So, let's answer the question. How can we use the problem and solution framework in a debate? One way is to break down the problem and solution framework into three key steps. Step one, identify the problem and potential solution. During prep time, we need to work with our partner to answer the following questions. Number one, description. What's the problem? Number two, weight. Why is this problem significant? Number three, solution. What are some ways to solve the problem? And number four, success. How do we know when we fixed the problem? I like to remember these questions by using the phrase, don't worry, structure Sam. The D stands for description. The W stands for weight, the S stands for solution, and the second S stands for success. So following step one of the problem and solution framework will improve the structure of our speech. Our first question, what is the problem? Asks us to think about what the motion attempts to solve. For example, if we debated the topic, students should be required to take a cooking class, one problem area of the motion is a lack of cooking skills among citizens. Now, we need to clarify why a lack of cooking skill is important with our second question. Why is this problem significant? With this question, we are attempting to generate some high magnitude, high risk, and or short time frame impacts for our side. Sure, a lack of cooking skills among citizens is potentially harmful, but we need to consider the weight of this topic. For example, we could note that a lack of basic cooking skills leads to unhealthy and convenient eating decisions like fast food. The implication of this could be a growing number of health concerns like obesity, increased governmental spending on health care, lower quality of life, and other serious issues. Of course, mandatory cooking classes in school wouldn't wholly solve obesity or increased government spending. However, it could help to significantly reduce the number of people who rely on unhealthy takeout food. Third. We must think about our solution. In this example, the motion somewhat provides us the answer. Mandatory cooking classes. But as debaters, we know a lot goes into making a mandatory cooking program for students. We know there are potentially other ways to limit unhealthy and convenient eating decisions. For example, a con might stand up and say, well, a cooking class may work to limit fast food consumption, but why shouldn't the government just close down all these unhealthy restaurants instead? As the pro, we need to brainstorm and defend why our solution is the best for solving the problem area. For example, mandatory cooking classes avoid a significant downturn of the economy, limit civil unrest, and increase self-esteem, whereas the shutdown solution may cause these issues. Either way, we should think about how to defend our solution as the best solution. Moreover, we want to consider how to implement our policy of mandatory cooking classes. We may wish to discuss what grade levels and types of schools should implement a mandatory cooking class in prep. Our fourth and final question is, how will we know when we fixed the problem? Most debaters forget to ask this question. That's because it can be challenging to answer. But you're no ordinary debater. You're in training to be a super debater, and evaluating the success of a solution can take your first speech to the next level. 
So how will the judge know when cooking classes help reduce unhealthy eating decisions? Another way to think of this question is, how long should we try our solution before it's time to try something else? Our mandatory cooking classes, the pro's solution, will likely require some time to be effective. One year of Chinese seventh graders learning to cook will not heavily reduce nationwide McDonald's or KFC consumption. However, after 10 or so years, it is reasonable that Chinese youth will make significantly better food decisions due to their enhanced cooking skills. On the con, you could argue that this problem requires a faster solution. However, you could argue that this is the best solution and it leads to long-term change on the pro. Moreover, if it takes so long to fix, then we should implement it right now by voting in favor of mandatory cooking classes in today's debate. Always remember, don't worry, Structure Sam. Describe, wait, solution, success. Step two, articulate the problem. Okay, now that we have identified the problem, its importance and potential solutions, we should discuss our presentation. Screaming phrases like economic collapse, serious health issues, and death while waving our arms in the air is not the best approach. Instead, we should be specific and concise. For example, judge, the problem in today's debate is a lack of adequate cooking skills for young adults. This can lead to an increase in poor food decisions and increase the risk of long-term and serious health concerns. Oh, and I should mention, we should avoid waving our arms in the air too. The important takeaway here is that our problem needs to be something our solution will solve. If obesity is a problem, but a mandatory cooking class does not solve it, we need to re-clarify what problem our solution is solving. Step three, defend our solution. The last and final step is to defend our solution. As discussed earlier, we need to argue why our solution is critical to solving each contention of our case. For example, Contention one might be that a lack of cooking skills causes issues like poor health, but our second contention might argue that cooking classes can increase student engagement at school. Thus, we must defend our solution for each problem we solve, unhealthy food choices, and low student engagement in other classes. Please note that with each topic comes a different set of problems and solutions. Perhaps you choose an entirely different issue to address with the motion students should be required to take a cooking class. But always remember, it's necessary one, describe what you think is the problem, and two, defend why a cooking class is the best solution. Good luck.